I'm Ed Fritz, owner of RoofingFoil.com. And if you're about to install a metal, tile, or some type of slate roofing system, then you have to install a radiant barrier. Whether you live in a hot, mixed, or cold climate, a radiant barrier will work with all these roofing systems to make your home or building more comfortable and energy efficient. I don't have to tell you that metal and tile roofing systems are expensive. You've decided to spend extra money for a quality product that'll last many years but you're only going to have one opportunity to install a radiant barrier. Now is the time to get it done. A radiant barrier is a low cost, big bang for the buck item that will make all these roofing systems better by making the home or building more comfortable and energy efficient. Plus, the radiant barrier install is easy. It doesn't change the roofing system one bit. Your roofing contractor is going to install it in the roofing system during their normal installation. I want to explain exactly how a radiant barrier works in a metal or a tile roofing system. But first, I want to give you an example to fully understand the effect of radiant heat gain. Think about a car parked in the shade on an 80 degree sunny day. So it's 80 degrees outside, it's sunny, but the car is parked in complete shade. As a rule, that car, the paint, the seats, everything in that car cannot get hotter than the 80 degrees outside. You could sit in that car all day long without any health risk. Now move the car a few feet into the direct sun and everything changes. The air temperature is still 80 degrees, but now all the surfaces are exposed to the radiant heat from the sun and all the surface temperatures increase. The paint, the interior, the air temperature, everything gets extremely hot to the point that that car could be deadly if you sat in it for a long period of time. Now remember, the air temperature is exactly the same, whether you're in the shade or in the sun. And the only thing that changes is the addition of the radiant heat. Now, a house is just like a car parked in the sun. And that's why you may have a day where it's only 60, 70 degrees, relatively cool outside, but yet because of the radiant heat gain, you have to run your air conditioner. And you may have some days 80 or 90 degrees where it's cloudy with virtually no radiant heat, that the house is perfectly comfortable. If you were to cover the parked car with roofing foil, the temperatures inside the car would act almost exactly as though it was parked in the shade. But it gets a little tricky in a roofing application because the foil, it's actually reflecting the heat even though it's not exposed to the direct sun. So now I'm going to use this model of a slate roof to show you exactly how a radiant barrier works. Now, it doesn't matter whether it's a slate, a tile, or a metal roof. A radiant barrier works exactly the same in all these different types of roofs. Whatever roofing product you have, whether it be tile, slate, or metal, is going to heat up on a hot sunny day. The top surface temperature can easily reach 180 degrees or more. And here's what happens. Once it gets hot, that heat is transferring through this product by conduction. And then it hits this airspace. Now in order for the heat to go across this airspace, it has to convert to its radiant heat form. Now, radiant heat transfer is the transfer of heat from one object to another object without the two ever touching. And this is the key, this airspace. In a tile or a metal roofing system, you have this airspace. And you have the ability, since it's converting to its radiant heat form, to own it. Basically, at this point, we can reflect it back. Now, here's an example of a roof without a radiant barrier. What happens is the roof gets hot, it radiates heat across this airspace, the roofing felt absorbs all the radiant heat, and then that heat is transferred into the roof deck, and then it's going to continue on into the attic or the building. Now let me show you what happens when a radiant barrier is installed. The roof is still going to get hot. Once it gets hot, it wants to radiate that heat across this airspace. But instead of being absorbed by the underlayment and passing into the attic or the building, the roofing foil is going to reflect the radiant heat. Roofing foil has a reflectivity rating of over 97%. So virtually all this radiant heat is being reflected. Now, the net effect is shade. Basically, everything below this foil is in the shade, just like we talked about a car parked in the shade. Everything below the foil is going to stay significantly cooler and not heat up as much. In fact, you can do part of the roof with the roofing foil and part of the roof without. And if you stand inside the attic, you can actually feel the difference of the radiant heat coming off the bottom of the roof deck 
where there is no radiant barrier compared to where there is the roofing foil. Now if you were inside the attic, you could actually put your hand on the bottom of the roof deck where there is and where there is not the roofing foil and you could actually feel the difference in the bottom uh, roof deck temperature. And if you were to use an infrared thermometer to measure the surface temperature, the bottom of the roof deck could easily be 20 degrees or more as far as being cooler with the radiant barrier compared to without the radiant barrier. Now 20 degrees may not seem like a whole lot, but that's a huge amount of heat that's being reflected that's never even entering the building. And this is really what contributes to the additional comfort and energy savings because of the radiant barrier installed. Finally, installing a radiant barrier will not cause damage to the metal or tile roof. People often ask, hey, if I'm reflecting all that heat back, won't that cause the roof to overheat, maybe age prematurely and cause damage? And the answer is no, because although you're reflecting all this radiant heat, the roof itself is only increasing about five to 10 degrees. And plus, these roofing products are usually designed to handle temperatures of over 200 degrees. So the answer is no, a radiant barrier will not cause damage to your roof. Talk to your roofing contractor and tell them that you want a radiant barrier installed in your new metal or tile roof. You only get one chance to do this. Plus, it's a product that will pay for itself. The energy savings will cover the cost of the material and will actually help offset the cost of the tile or metal roof. In addition, the home or building will be more comfortable. If you have specific questions about your roofing application, visit the website roofingfoil.com or give us a call and one of our experts can help you with your specific application. If you enjoyed this video, please like this video. If you'd like to see some related roofingfoil.com videos, click on the links to the side. Finally, if you'd like to subscribe to our YouTube channel, click on the button below. Thanks for watching.